good morning to you and happy Monday. So excited to start our week off together. And uh, there's something I really want to bring to you this morning that the Lord's been sharing with me these last couple weeks. And I really believe it's a picture of what the Lord is doing in the spirit. Of course, Rosh Hashanah uh, was this weekend and, and we've seen a lot of shifts through Rosh Hashanah and uh, we're coming into an RN now, the 10 days of awe, uh, headed into Yom Kippur. And so what I wanted to share with you the last couple of weeks, uh, in the spirit as I've really prayed over many situations. And, you know, it's interesting because being on multiple intercessor calls, like oftentimes you do hear a theme and it's very confirming because we know when, when he's speaking to intercessors around the globe and you hear the same theme and the same hem at work, we know that, that God is speaking, right? The Holy Spirit is speaking. And so in 1 Samuel 13, uh, he, the Lord has been taking me back, um, go back and read the story of Samuel and Saul. And so I, I've been going back and asking the Lord, and I landed, of course, in 1 Samuel 15, which is probably not foreign to most of us. We Most of us have heard this, and this is what it says. Samuel is speaking to Saul, who has not obeyed the Lord's orders fully. There's been partial obedience, but not full obedience there. And this is what Samuel says to Saul. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. And so, what I want you to catch, and so... In prayer, probably over these last three days, I want to say Thursday, I began seeing this gavel come down as I was praying. And I really felt like out of Daniel 7, uh, we're going to be talking about this in the future, but in Daniel 7, when the Ancient of Days stands up and he renders judgment in favor of the saints, of the Most High. That Most High is a very specific phrase only used in Daniel, but this gavel comes down and the Lord renders judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High. And so what's really cool about that story and what goes on there is I believe we are in this historical moment where the gavel is coming down and the Lord is is smashing things. He's rendering judgments in favor of the saints. Um, and, and we see that governmentally. We see great exposure. And the two uh, areas I really see this, probably in every area really, but uh, religion is the first area and government is the second area. I keep seeing the Lord is just bringing down that gavel. And when he brings it down, it's shattering what's underneath it. I want to back up because most of us know from, you know, what happened there in 1 Samuel 15 about obedience is better than sacrifice. But what I want to read is this little portion of 1 Samuel 13 so you can get the full effect. And so what it says is this, um, Samuel gave very clear instruction to Saul about what the Lord spoke. And the instruction, uh, in a very brief nutshell, I won't go back and read it, but the instruction is basically to kill when he goes to war, to kill all the women, the infants, the animals, everybody. Well, Saul did not do that. He did not kill everybody. And so what happens is, and I want you to get this, um, in 1 Samuel 13, 17, it says, Saul remained at Gilgal and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal and Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived and Saul went out to greet him. 
So what I want you to catch about this is when a leader is in partial disobedience, okay, fear comes into the camp, right? And so fear is inundated and these troops are quaking with fear and Saul doesn't know what to do because things are beginning to fall apart and Saul in his heart recognizes he did not fully obey the word of the Lord and he's starting to see the ramifications of this. And so what does Saul do? Well, he he relies on his flesh. He relies on this religious moment where he goes, "You know what? I'm going to start I'm going to start sacrificing." And so he brings the burn offering and he brings the fellowship offering and he starts sacrificing all of these things. Um, of course, Samuel never comes. And um, so when Samuel does come, listen to this. What have you done? Asked Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering, okay? I felt compelled, not the Lord said, I felt compelled. Samuel says to him, you acted foolishly. You have not kept in mind the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. This is what he missed out on. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. And so I want you to catch something and I believe there's a prophetic parallel of what God is doing in this season. You see, there's many leaders in the body of Christ that have a Saul-like spirit, right? And they are not fully obeying the commands of the Lord. And he's highlighting that in this season. And so we can all, myself included, we can all turn to this religious spirit that talks about sacrifice. You know, well, I'll just start fasting or I'll intercede or whatever that sacrifice is. But you see, the sacrifice does not equate obedience. Because if we are not in alignment with what the Lord is speaking, and how do we know if we're in alignment with what the Lord is speaking? Well, we're also in alignment with his people, right? And so when we're in alignment, vertical alignment, there's also horizontal alignment in our community with our leaders. There's unity, all of these things. And so what is going on right now is so fascinating because literally out of Daniel 7, 21 and 22, we're going to talk about that next week in more depth, but the Lord is, is bringing down this gavel and he's smashing this religious spirit. And it's such a beautiful thing because he's bringing bringing us back to his heart and he's bringing us back to this place that says have you fully obeyed me and he's literally highlighting those uh, who have this religious spirit because of his love for us and so he's highlighting this religious spirit like you can sacrifice all day long but if you have not fully obeyed what the Lord has asked you to do you will be dethroned and he will hand the kingdom keys over to a leader who is going to fully obey and so it's really interesting. 2020 has been a year of great refining, of great exposure, exposure uh, in my own heart. And the Lord is purifying and refining, bringing that dross to the surface for all of us. So this is not me pointing fingers. This is me taking this message and going, Lord, highlight in me areas where I have uh, chosen sacrifice. I have chosen sacrificial things and not been in full obedience to you. And as a nation, you are going to see this all over the nation. We're starting to see it already. But the last couple of weeks in our intercessor calls, the Lord is speaking. I am smashing this religious spirit. And what's so interesting is he always gives us a chance privately to get right with him. And then he brings it publicly just like he did with Saul and so I really pray we're going to pray into this right now but I really pray that we will choose full obedience to the Lord and not 
go to the sacrifice of all of the things that we're doing. And so let's just join hands. I really believe there's no distance in the spirit, you guys. And so I just join hands with you today. It's so good. Oh, Terry, it's so good to see you, my friend. And Shana, uh, Rebecca, uh, Bappy, I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but I bless you today. It's so great to have you on. And so let's just pray. So Father, we come to you, God, and we give you full permission, God, any area of our heart where we're not in full obedience and surrender to you, God, I ask, Father, for greater refinement. I ask for purification. I ask that your blood would cleanse each and every area in that Holy Spirit you would highlight any area of witchcraft or rebellion or any area where we're in error to you, Father. I thank you, God, that you are rising up the ecclesia as this pure, consecrated, united front that we as the Church of America, we are rising. I just see that now. The army is, is rising and you are purifying, you are consecrating. And God, we will take a stand in these days, Father. And so God, I thank you, Lord, that the Church of America, your ecclesia, God, will Father, obey you, and Father, we will return as the United States of America, united under your Holy Spirit, because there can be no other unity, and so we praise your name. Hey, uh, hey, Adiana, it's so good to see you, friend. I hope you have a great week, and uh, I'm just right with you in the purification process and asking the Lord, I love you cheering you on and I really have such great hope for our nation and I have even greater hope that the Church of America is rising and when the church rises there will be a shift in our nation and so we're seeing that right so despite all the word curses of 2020 I really invite you to continue to rejoice in all God's doing have a great week